Inflation is one of the biggest concerns in the West, especially when it comes to grocery prices. Inflation. Inflation. Inflation is on the agenda. While I've been living in Cambodia for almost two years now, and some people don't even believe me when I tell them how incredibly affordable this country is. So join my wife and I as we go grocery shopping at our local farmer's market. I'll have the grocery prices all at the top of the screen as we go, and over the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna tell you what Cambodia is doing right that makes it one of the most appealing countries in the world for doing your grocery shopping. Now, if you follow the news in America, you'll know that Tucker Carlson recently caused a stir when he visited Russia and praised them for, among other things, their low grocery prices. He was shocked when he was able to buy himself about two weeks worth of groceries for just $100. Well, you know what my reaction was when I read that? $100 for two weeks worth of groceries? That seems a bit pricey. Yeah, that's how living in Cambodia has affected my perspective on all this. I like small cucumbers. So while preparing to make this video, I asked my wife, how much do we spend on groceries for the two of us? She told me $25 a week. Yes, we spend $100 a month on groceries for two people. How can that even be possible? Here's the truth. Food prices are unnaturally high in the West, and no media source will really tell you the whole truth about why that is the case. On one hand, you have the right-wing media that blames fiscal deficits, stimulus spending, and the Federal Reserve as causing the dollar to lose its purchasing power. Well, that's not entirely true. Cambodia also uses the US dollar as currency, and yet our prices are extremely low and stable compared to America. Then you have the left-wing media blaming corporate greed and lack of regulations for causing corporations to raise their prices and squeeze out the American consumer. Well, that doesn't really make sense either. Corporations are greedy in every part of the world, and the countries with the most regulation also seem to have the highest consumer prices. So clearly the idea that we need big government to step in and fix everything is also not the solution. Then you have the more rational people in the middle that will just point out that, sure, groceries might be cheaper in places like Southeast Asia or Russia, but that's just because people there are so poor compared to the West. However, that explanation is also lacking. Otherwise, you'd expect Singapore, Hong Kong, and Japan to have similar or higher grocery prices than America, given their level of wealth. But actually, their groceries are a lot cheaper. So what gives? Well, look at where I am. Does this look like your typical Western grocery store? Is it tidy and professional? Is it situated on prime real estate? Is their food being inspected by some government authority? Do you think any of these people are even paying taxes? These questions all have pretty obvious answers, and they explain exactly why the food here is being sold at rock bottom prices. The false narrative that you're all given in the West is that the prices that you pay for goods roughly reflect the resources that it takes to produce those goods. Let's say you go to the grocery store and you buy an orange for a half a dollar. You probably think to yourself, that seems pretty fair. Growing an orange tree takes water, fertilizer, pesticides, etc., and the cost of all of those resources must come out pretty close to the price of this orange. Well, that's not true. The cost of all of that comes out to pennies per orange. So given that we know that farmers aren't marking up their orange prices by a thousand percent, where does the rest of that cost come from? Mostly regulatory burden. I always hear this myth that American agriculture is some massively subsidized industry. People say things like, oh yeah, if it weren't for all the government subsidies, then a hamburger would have to cost $50. Well, in Cambodia, I can make a filet mignon for $3, and I can assure you that there's not some massive beef tenderloin subsidy in Cambodia. In reality, there's bureaucratic red tape covering every piece of the agricultural industry. Permitting, zoning, FDA and USDA regulations, animal welfare laws, labor laws, and of course taxation, push up the cost of every single scrap of food you will ever buy in America. But in Cambodia, 
there are no laws or regulations restricting farmers' ability to do their job. They can put their farm where they want, they can grow what they want, they can sell their food where they want, they can use whatever labor they want, and the system works great. Everyone has easy access to fresh, natural food at affordable prices. More people here also just grow their own food as a hobby. Meanwhile, in America, you had the famous case of the Miami woman who had to go to court just to have a vegetable garden. When there are no restrictions on the supply of food, what you find is that there is plenty of it to go around. The government would love you to believe without all of their regulations, there would be chaos and people would be dying from tainted food left and right. But that couldn't be further from the truth. These are all myths sold to you by mega corporations to make it as difficult as possible for you to challenge their stranglehold on the food supply. In America, Tyson controls 20% of the meat market, and they lobby for restrictions that stop you from having a pig or a chicken in your backyard. Dole controls 25% of the fruit market, and they lobby to make sure that you have to jump through a bunch of hoops and get an agriculture license to sell fruit from your orange tree to all of your friends. And the Amish people are having to go to court because the USDA doesn't like their 200-year-old organic farming practices. In a place like Cambodia or Thailand, there would be protests on every street corner if the government tried to tell farmers how to do their job. Here, everyone knows what keeps the food cheap. It's by giving the power to the individual farmers, not to big government or big corporations. The farmers take pride in their work, which is why the food is all good quality despite the lack of oversight. Doing things this way is good for consumer prices, but it's also quite good for the environment. In America, all of the food that you buy has to be transported from some other state. Your strawberries come from California, your beef comes from Texas, your peaches come from Georgia, and your potatoes come from Idaho. Those transportation costs are significant to both the environment and to your wallet. On the contrary, nearly all of the food that we buy here comes from some local farmer a dozen kilometers away. That means if it can't grow in Cambodia, we don't eat it. I love me some strawberries, but I'm not going to pay $20 for a small box of them imported all the way from California. I'll opt for some fresh mangoes for less than a dollar instead. In the West, we always hear about supply chain issues affecting food prices. But in Cambodia, the supply chain only has one link from the local farmer to your kitchen. This is far better than the multi-layered system in the West where the grocery store operator, their landlord, their distributor, their farmers, and of course the government all need to get their own cut of the profits on every sale. Western folks would love to think that our way of doing things is more streamlined, but in reality, it's needlessly convoluted. When food can be locally grown without any restrictions, everyone wins. That is why food in Asia is so cheap compared to the West. If you want to know more about just how cheap it is to live in Cambodia, then I think you should go watch this video over here.